What is up, weary travelers? Welcome to another Root gameplay where I am going to be playing the Woodland Alliance, except this time I am going to be playing on the winter map. Now, this was a game that I played a few days ago, and I am excited to share it with you guys. Uh, we've got the Marquise de Cat uh, down on the bottom here, and we've also got the Eerie. They're going to be popping up opposite to them here. And we're just kind of going through the basic setup here. So let's see what happens. There's the Eerie going into the bunny clearing, the top left corner of the map. Now, the winter map is kind of interesting because um, it is seen as a bit weaker for the Woodland Alliance, and that's mostly due to the lack of interconnectivity between the clearings. They're really kind of the left side and the right side, and they're only connected by two uh, direct paths. And so these kind of two separating areas, you kind of have to, as an Alliance player, really find out which side you're going to be working in and if you actually have a fighting chance chance on spreading out to the other side. And we've got the Vagrant Vagabond coming in, appearing in the forest here. All right, and so the game is now going to begin with the first round and the cats are going to start off by crafting some boots, getting one point. Not too bad. And they're going to be crafting a sawmill in their home base here as well. It's going to put them at two points. This is a pretty good opener for, for cats. I think with, uh, with the winter map, as the cats, you really want to try to hold your position uh, and, and really just kind of secure one whole side of the map as soon as possible is kind of the first goal with them. So they're going to be moving up some cats over here to do just that. It looks like they're going to try to kind of cut off uh, the top clearing from getting passed through by anyone. And that's going to be the first turn for the Marquise, the cat. Now it's moving on to my first turn. And like I said, when you're playing the Woodland Alliance, you have to think about a couple of things. But one of the things that I had to immediately think about is which side I'm going to be starting on in this map. Now I started with two mouse supporters and one fox supporter. And I usually would want to start over on the right side. It just has a bit uh, usually just, I like, I like starting on the right side usually, but with this particular setup, I had the right cards and supporters to get all three original sympathy down. So I wanted to start on the left side because I was able to put all three of them down. Now this is not, <laughs> I'm kind of setting up here. I, I considering crafting, but ended up not doing so. And I eventually just am putting all of these cards into my supporters. Uh, you know, the standard kind of Woodland Alliance opening here, nothing too fancy. And now we're going to look at what the Vagrant is going to do. They're going to be thinking about where exactly they're going to be slipping to. And it looks like they're going to be going to the left over to where my sympathy is, which originally is kind of making me a little bit more annoyed because I was hoping they'd go to the right. And of course, they're going to attack my sympathy. <laughs> That's fine. I mean, kind of expected to lose one or two this turn, um, but I was hoping not to lose the mouse. See, because the, the real goal here is for me to actually get my first. I wanted my first revolt in the mouse, but it turns out since that one was removed, it will likely be my second revolt. But we'll see if I can pull that off. Uh, I end up pulling it off in this, but but you'll see how I pull it off. All right, now we're going to the Eerie's turn. And the Eerie started off with the Despot Leader. They're gonna be adding to their decree here and let's see what they're going to do. Let's see what direction they're gonna be recruiting. Looks like the Despot are going to be moving down to that clearing that I want to go with a base at some point. So it's looking less and less likely like I'm going to get there. The cats, once again, another craft. This is this is really good. They're crafting another boot. Um, it's going to give them another point. So they're still having a nice solid beginning to their game. They're going to be 
opening up with that uh, workshop down below, kind of probably pressuring some rule to make sure that nobody can pass on that below uh, the below clearings. So now they've got the top and the bottom covered. And this is really what you want to do is the cats is you want to just maintain an entire half of the map uh, when it's the winter map specifically. And they're going to do something that actually surprised me, which is attack my sympathy. And <laughs> that's rude, but I was able to get a wild supporter. So I'm not too sad about it. And they're going to be building a recruiter over there. And I think I think they should have built that recruiter up in the fox clearing with four cats, but um, yeah. And now here I am kind of considering revolting. Now I'm realizing that it's going to be harder to get to that middle mouse unless I get some warriors. So I do end up deciding to revolt here. This is not a good spot to revolt though. This is this is <laughs> this is very much just kind of my temporary base to kind of get an engine rolling. And sometimes you have to do this as the Woodland Alliance. This is kind of something that you have to kind of risk is uh, can I plop up a base that's going to be temporary in order to get to where I really want my base? And this is exactly how I'm kind of thinking right now. I was able to get uh, a uh, an officer, so I've got two knight actions now, and I just went ahead and recruited twice, and now I've got three Woodland Alliance warriors at my fox base here. Oh, the Vagabond is going to be slipping down and exploring, of course, the usual stuff. Now it looks like the Vagabond is going to be aiding and they're just figuring out what item to go ahead and exhaust. And they went ahead and gave me a wild bird card. Now it's at this part that I'm thinking it's, it's quite possible. Oh, and then they're going to attack my sympathy. Cool. Um, it's quite possible that, um, they might befriend me throughout this game. I would love that. I would appreciate that. Um, but we shall see. And now what are they gonna do? That's gonna be their turn there. So let's see what the Eerie Dynasty is going to do with their second turn here. Gonna be adding to the decree, obviously. Now, right now I'm looking at the board and the cats are in a very great position. They've pretty much got half that map locked down. The Eerie, they're still just kind of working on their own engine, it looks like. Um, if I was the Eerie player, I would probably start to try and just just pressure a little bit in if just a little bit of pressure for the marquis seeing as all three of the other uh, sorry all their other two opponents to the marquis are on the same side as the eerie so i would be thinking like i am kind of one of the main points of defense here in order to make sure that the marquis doesn't set up super super well now, they're going to go ahead and add to their decree, and it looks like they're kind of struggling with what they want to do exactly, whether they want to put it in recruit or move, and it looks like they're going to be opting for some more recruit, and they're going to move down to the bottom bunny clearing, and I'm sure they're going to be placing a roost there. Let's go ahead and see. They're also going to be starting to make a move uh towards the top and that is going to be where they build and go double roost which is this is a good time to do that because um, they are also protected from being on this side with the cats all being on the other side uh, it's just going to depend on who wants to actually smack some of those roosts but it looks like they're going to be going double build despot um, until they can uh, eventually turmoil and set up their next leader now cats are going to be considering the filled hospital see if they go ahead and do it. And it was at this point that I was getting a little bit worried that they might uh, be AFK because the timer started. Um, that is not a good thing to see. So uh, quite a bit of time has passed and they still have not decided whether they're going to be doing that field hospital. I was getting a little bit weary that maybe my opponent would leave the game here. Uh, luckily, that was not the case. But at some point here, they're going to start playing and making their turn. Um, it was just a close call. Very, very close call. I always get very, very worried when I see that timer start. It just always freaks me out. Like, come on, people. Let's play. Let's play some root. And so the cat ends up filled hospitaling, paying one of those. And they went ahead and built another sawmill down at their keep. 
they were able to recruit and obviously attacked my sympathy once again. Uh, they're definitely keeping me at bay here. So now it is my turn and I'm thinking about what to do. I'm thinking uh, I really want to get over to that mouse clearing. That's still my goal. I want to revolt there. That is my goal right now. Um, I'm considering possibly training some more to get some extra actions. I'm realizing that I'm going to have to train, I believe, in order to have enough actions. Um, uh, actually, no, I don't think I do. I think I end up just mobilizing. Oh, no, no, I do train. Okay, yeah, yeah. so I needed three officers here. My thinking was that I was going to get to that mouse clearing, and I'm going to be sending all three of my friends down here. Um, but then I realized that I made a little mistake. I was not able to move through to that mouse clearing. So I actually had to recruit first and then move down all four. So that's why I needed that other officer. Now I'm moving into there and I'm leaving one behind. That's just to kind of, uh, you know, just have some positioning throughout the map. And now I am at the mouse clearing that I wanted to be with three warriors and a sympathy token. This is a huge danger. And you'll see that I left that Fox base completely undefended because I don't really worry about that. Mostly because I am moving over a new base. I don't, I don't need the Fox base. Technically, I don't have a lot of Fox supporters. I'll only be losing that wild supporter. So we've now got the Vagabond. The Vagabond is going to be aiding our friend, the Marquise de Cat here. And I thought they were friends with me. So that's kind of rude. Um, but, you know, that's what the Vagabond does, right? Seems pretty much the, the meta for uh, the Vagrant Vagabonds is uh, pretty much aiding mostly. And I went ahead and just looked at their hand. Some foxes, some mice, nothing too interesting. And it looks like the Vagabond is going to aid once again, and they're thinking about an item to exhaust, and they're going to aid the Marquise de Cat again, so they're at two friendship with the Marquise de Cat, and we're at one friendship, and no friendship with the Eerie Dynasties just yet. And the Vagrant is going to move up to that central ruin clearing now and probably set up for the next turn. And they're going to go ahead and do a quest, which is awesome. I love to see Vagabonds doing quests. Uh, I just wish quests were a little bit more viable to just do questing for like the whole thing. That would be so rad. But mixing them in, always a good, always a good thing. And so now the Eerie are going to go ahead and assign to their decree. What are they going to do? I actually don't remember this turn. I don't remember what they did on this turn. So I am going to be experiencing this live. Oh my gosh. Okay. That's why I don't remember. I probably blocked it out of my memory. Um, now this isn't a huge win for the Eerie. Um, they got two points. That's good, but it's not, it wasn't like devastating or anything. Uh, I'm sure they just thought that they would just do it right then because they could, uh, I think that they could have waited a little bit, but who knows? Uh, it's still a favors. <laughs> They're always scary. They always suck. Um, but at the end of the day, didn't do too much damage and did zero damage to me. It was really only to the cats losing some buildings, which at this stage of the game isn't the worst thing for the cats. They're going to be recruiting some eerie warriors in their bottom bunny roost and their mouse roost in the middle. And let's see which direction they're going to be heading to the bottom left mouse clearing, giving me a supporter and woohoo, it was a bird. That's great. They're also gonna be spreading out over to the bottom mouse middle, sorry, bottom bunny middle. And they were able to plop down two more roosts. So they're doing really well right now. They're setting themselves up for that, for that double despot, or sorry, double, uh, double build despot eerie, which is, it's really solid. I mean, it works, you know? This is definitely one of the things that you can do as the Eerie. You can just kind of spread upon the whole board. They're in a pretty good position now. So now let's see what the Marquise de Cat is going to do. I think it's around this point where they make a decision that I highly disagreed with. Um, I, I mean, I, I don't think they were out of the game here, but I think that they thought that they were out of the game. And so they ended up going for a Fox dominance. And this is just... This was not, this, this wouldn't have been my play. 
if I had been the the uh, the cats here. Uh, this this essentially this early in the game with the, with this rough of a position essentially just put them at uh, they they are going to lose now because um, we can all just stop them from winning. They don't have a really good recruitment. They don't have a lot of cats on the board. This is this is just not going to be the best situation for them right now to to go for that dominance. Uh, and they were at 10 points. They were at a competitive point amount. They were able to build a recruiter up there. Like a better turn would have just been to build that recruiter, get the points and still pressure that point game. But they're now going for the Fox dominance. So I now get to choose to revolt. And this is actually kind of a hard decision for me because one of these revolts was going to take a lot more warriors off the board and give me two points. Whereas one was only gonna take one warrior off the board, but give me one point. But the center mouse clearing is a much better interconnected spot. And so that's why this was such a tough choice as I'm choosing either the better location for less points or the worst location for more points and more warriors removed. I ended up going with the center though. And I got two extra warriors because I had that other mouse sympathy. So now I'm sitting at five warriors in the spot where I really wanted my base. I finally got the base that I wanted. I am now, you know, whatever, 20 minutes or so into the game and I'm feeling real hyped now because I finally got to where I wanted to be. This was the whole goal, this whole game. Uh, this is kind of my first step. So now I'm thinking of the things that I can do and there's quite a few options. I've got four officers now, so four evening actions. I'm gonna spread a little bit of sympathy down below and I am gonna opt to craft sappers. I believe I end up crafting sappers because this is always a good, it's always a good card for pretty much every faction. They pretty much every faction can use it at some points in the game. And I just felt like since I was likely going to be on the defensive here soon, I thought I would play it now. So now I am going to be calculating and kind of moving around the map. This is something that I like to do as the Woodland Alliance. And it's something that on the winter map, you kind of have to do to cross the line, essentially, because oftentimes these these this top and bottom clearing points, they're going to be covered by a ton of uh, enemies, really. And so to get to the other side, you kind of want to make a warrior ball and just kind of push through. And here I'm leaving a warrior behind because I want to put myself into positions where I can now sweep and get a ton of sympathy uh, on a later turn, really. And so I ended up moving across the whole map and actually stopping this dominance win here, which I kind of wish that I didn't so that I could pressure the Eerie to do it for me. But I ended up doing it because I'm nice. And I let some warriors just kind of lay all throughout the map. Now, I'm actually super low on warriors, which is the only problem right now with this current situation, but I'm going to be getting a lot of those back soon as I go ahead and flip those into sympathy. So now we're going to be here on the Vagrant's turn, and they are going to be... Let's see what they're going to do here. Now the Vagrant actually chose, uh, they actually opted not to slip. It looks like they're gonna go ahead and explore at that ruin. Uh, this would be their final ruin that they're going to be unlocking here. And they're gonna be moving up right to where I am at, crafting a crossbow. And I believe they, if I remember, I don't know why, but I, it just stuck in my mind. I believe they just used the crossbow that they just crafted to shoot a mouse. Oh, sorry, a cat here. That's pretty funny. <laughs> I think if I had been the Vagrant, which not knowing their plans, not knowing what they're doing, um, I think I would have shot the mouse here. Oh, it looks like they're going to undo all of that. So they're literally moving right back. Uh, they undid the crossbow craft, undid the move, undid everything. Oh, goodness. Okay, now they're going to be moving back. They're, they're now feeling a little bit more... Uh, maybe a little bit more confident in this move. All right, so they went ahead and traded a bird for a dominance card. Now, I should have thought that that was a little suspicious because it was just a bird for a bird. And 
Vagabonds don't really care about bird cards. This isn't like something important. So I should have seen that they grabbed that dominance card and kind of thought a little bit twice about it. Here, I'm just thinking, you know, whatever. Um, and now they're considering to aid instead of going for that crossbow route, it looks like. All right, so they went ahead and literally returned the dominance card, then took it back. So this, this Vagabond is literally going back and forth, back and forth here, not knowing what they want to do. Uh, they're going to exhaust that item and aid me, of all people. So they just completely threw away the whole crossbow plan. This was a very, very long turn for the Vagabond here. Just not certain what to do or what direction to go in, it looks like. Whew, okay, so they went ahead and aided me again. So now we are uh, to aid and then went ahead and did a coalition here with me. So that's where I should have, uh, I should have assumed that this was going to happen. I don't mind it happening. I mean, as long as I win, I win. Um, my biggest problem is I don't like when Vagabonds coalition and win when I feel like they wouldn't have won otherwise, or when they don't really pull their weight as a coalition. Pretty much the whole coalition concept kind of sometimes annoys me because it feels like now people think that I only won because I was the one who got a coalition, whereas the Vagabond does not need more ways to win. And that could be a whole discussion about like my thoughts on coalitions and but really what about them. I think that on like lower level play, I think that they are important to have in a game with players that are just not uh, very competitive. But I feel like in any sort of competitive game at all of Root, I feel like coalitions just shouldn't be a thing. But mm, who knows? That's just that's just my thinking on it. I do know that in the winter tournament, there is no coalitions. and That makes me super happy. I totally agree with that choice. Um, but yeah, so now I am in a coalition with the Vagrant player. So I can probably expect a steady supply of cards, which would be really good for my support. Now we've got the Eerie. They are getting quite a bit of warriors. They're trying to get as much warriors out, it looks like, before they are eventually going to be turmoiling here. They're going to move five warriors just over clearing to the right, trying to break through this pass here probably trying to get to more build spots because that's that's really seems to be their issue is they just need the build spots right now they're going to be dropping down two more roosts and they're doing really good right now this is a great spot for the eerie to be in at the moment they're 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 playing well and they're doing they're doing well now, I really feel bad for the Marquise because they it's, they really shot themselves in the foot. They went for that early dominance. They, they really shouldn't have unless they were in a better position. But at this point, it's just there's no way that they could win the game unless pretty much everybody else at the table makes a huge mistake because they're already kind of behind in their engine economy. And so this just see like this right here, they're going to be taking my base. Uh, but this really doesn't benefit them that much because they don't get points anymore. So them doing this is just kind of wasted actions. Now it could slow me down, sure. But at the end of the day, I, I really wish that they had stuck with the point system. Um, yeah, it's, 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 un it's unfortunate. And I didn't actually mind losing this base. Cause like I said, this base was <laughs> the Fox base was never meant to really last. I was pretty much just, uh, just a way for me to get warriors to then move to the mouse to then take over and get a mouse base. So that was all just a little hop off point. All right. Now the Marquise de Cat is probably going to position, regain a little bit of control, probably trying to make sure that they get uh, just back. There we go. Now, uh, just note, when I looked into the Marquise de Cat's hand, all I saw was that uh, bunny card and a bunny ambush. So that kind of plays into this turn on how I end up approaching it and what I end up doing, not expecting to be screwed over here soon. But I do not have any revolts that I'm going to do, so I'm going to go ahead and pass that. And I have no sympathy to spread, so I'm going to go ahead and just go straight to daylight, essentially. And this is going to be where I am going to pretty much mobilize most of what is in my hand. And I'm kind of debating on using this favor to get an officer instead of banking on actually using the favor and crafting it. Um, 
it was kind of a hard decision for me because I always like to use a favor if I can, if I can see that I could actually do it. But um, I end up just kind of mobilizing pretty much my entire hand. A uh, lot of bunny, a lot of fox cards. Um, and I'm still debating on whether I want to train that favor of the mice card. And um, I end up opting on doing it. And I think this is pretty an important concept because I lost some of my officer economy when I did lose that fox. That is the one thing is I still lose my officer economy, but uh, just not a huge detriment right now at this point in the game. So I'm going to go ahead and use that. And now we're going to be, I, here's my second considering. I was thinking, okay, look, I know that he has a bunny ambush. Uh, I was banking on him not drawing another type of ambush, but I <laughs> I gambled incorrectly, folks. Uh, I end up getting ambushed, which they must have drawn at the end of that turn. Very, very unlucky. Uh, otherwise, I could have gotten two points out of that clearing, removing the recruiter and then going ahead and organizing there. But I'm still going to go ahead and organize at the top fox and the bottom bunny on this side. And now you kind of see the power of really doing the warrior ball and just kind of getting a lot of Woodland Alliance troops in one, clearing and moving them from one side to the other in order to break through really what the main problem usually is uh, with the Woodland Alliance on the winter map is just not even being able to get to the other side of the map. But I was able to break through with ease because I never had to worry about paying any extra cards uh, just because I just walked straight through. So... This is definitely one of the ways that you can kind of deal with that problem on this map. So I am now kind of chilling. Um, I am, let's see what our, our vagrant vagabond friend is now going to do. Um, Cause they're on my team now. So let's see what exactly they're thinking about doing. So now they're going to be doing the crossbow play. This was a long time coming. They were going to do this uh, turn or two, turn or two ago. Now they're going to be crafting that crossbow, shooting the crossbow, taking out the cat, and then attacking the cat player now with sword. This is probably just to make sure that the cats do not have dominance. And once again here, I kind of wish that me and the the vagrant maybe communicated a little better and just kind of left the dominance part alone a little bit and made sure that um, our friend here, the Eerie Dynasties, would have to deal with it quite a bit because that was kind of one of the problems is that like it's slowing us down to try and stop this, but the Eerie really didn't have to do much. Um, they did end up pressuring the other spot, but they technically didn't have to because we had already pressured the Fox clearing. So I kind of wish that we had put the check onto the Eerie at some point here instead of always checking them ourselves. So now the Eerie is going to be adding to their decree. Let's see what they're going to pop up here. All right. I'm going to go ahead and craft a coin. Always, always hurts when I see a coin crafted. Um, just because it's, it's so sad to see the Eerie only get one point for the coins. Ah, sad, but you know, it's a good play. It's, it's not a bad play to craft it. I don't, I don't care about when I'm playing the Eerie, you craft what you can and get those points. Don't bank on getting the builder out. So they're going to do a couple of recruits. I believe they got pretty much all of their Eerie Dynasty Warriors out now. And this is pretty much all of the roosts that they can get out now. So this turn is going to end in a turmoil like fashion, which is going to put them at a pretty weak next turn. Actually, now that I think of it, I believe that they, no, 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 no. I think I was wrong. I think they can fill out two more roosts. No, I'm going crazy. So they're going to go ahead and try to do as much damage as possible before they go into turmoil here, attacking 
Uh, the cat building here, getting another two points for that. And there is their demise, the turmoil. We all knew it was coming. They're going to be popping back up quite a little bit here. And I assumed that they were going to move to the commander. And I ended up being right about that because they've got pretty much all of their Eerie on the board. If they didn't, if they needed to get a lot of recruits, maybe the charismatic, but pretty much I like to clean up the rest of the game with the commander. So I'm glad they went with that commander leader here. All right, cats, they are not in a good position. Once again, this is going to be another turn where they're just really struggling right now. Uh, they're going, they're going through a lot. They're going through a lot. They've got a lot of just sitting wood that won't get them points anyways when they build buildings, but they really should try to be securing more of recruiters or at least getting a lot of cats into just those three clearings now that they've committed to this dominance. So um, they're definitely struggling right now at this point in the game. Now me, I am considering doing an ambush here. Um, and you know what? I, I end up opting not to because this, this, I, I'm not like super concerned. I'm, I feel like I could use it in a better situation later. So I end up opting to decline this offer of using the ambush. I'm not going to do it. And I always love moments like this when I feel very, very lucky. I end up using the sappers though, because now that I got one hit, I was like, oh, this is a perfect opportunity to just clean both of these cats up. So I ended up just using the sappers and getting rid of all the cats at the end of the day. Once again, I'm so sorry because it just, it feels bad because the cats are already in such a rough position and doing that just felt wrong. But I now have an opportunity to revolt and... I'm definitely not going to revolt in the fox. I was going to revolt in one of these two bunnies just to take another one of the roosts. It's now the time to take roosts out because they had just went into turmoil. So them rebuilding those roosts is going to be <laughs> take quite a bit more time. And now I've got some very expensive sympathy movements here because of all of that. Uh, all of the warriors on the board, these are very expensive moves for low point count. I'm only going to be getting two points from this and spending three foxes. So very, very painful. Um, I ended up opting to do it in the space that pretty much I don't want to be going that direction. So I was thinking it would be good to end up doing it onto the left side of the board because I'm just not going to be moving out there um, with any warriors. So ends up being the best spot to go ahead and put that sympathy. And now I see an opportunity here. I see that the cats are leaving a large, large hole in their keep economy here. Um, this is this is just too good to pass up. It's a gold mine in there. There is quite a bit to clear out. And I just, I don't think I can really not focus on just taking that out. If that had been covered, if that had been protected, I can see a world in which I did not, but it's not protected at all. So this is just the opportunity to go down there. Um, yep. So my turn pretty much is just playing around that just in case I get ambushed again. I don't want to even deal with thinking about that. So I went ahead and got ambush party. That way I can just go in here with just two warriors and just kind of just keep attacking for no fear at all and just clear out all these buildings here. And this is going to give me quite a few points. So um, I end up getting a nice roll of two here, which means three with the defenseless bonus. So that's just three points right there. Um, going up to 17, I'm going to go ahead and attack again. And that's two, which is another three. So I'm clearing everything except for the keep right here. And I could opt for a third attack, but I end up going ahead and recruiting back at my rabbit base because I'm not ready to lose that yet. I want to make it a little bit more expensive for my opponents to come and attack. All right, so I'm at 20 points. I'm in a crazy good position right now. I just got a ton of craftables in my hand too. So I am pretty much guaranteed. I feel like I'm going to be winning next turn. Now, the it, there is a world in which the commander, if they had had a better action economy, could go over to the fox clearing. 
um, the fox clearing where all those cats are and try to hack down and get to the wood pile there. That would definitely be a good play um, and maybe plopping a roost there. But I just think their action economy is a bit rough now now that they had just gone to turmoil. And I'm just at the point of ramping up probably too strong to be stopped at this rate. So it's looking really good. I, I've broken... It's, it's looking really good. I kind of broke out of... Um, kind of broke out of the, the, the real choke that most Woodland Alliance players really get on the winter map. So it felt really good at this point. And I've just got my vagrant friend here. He just feed me cards, you know, just kind of here for the ride, going to win the game, you know, um, unless the Eerie do something here. Um, but yeah, I tried to calculate on behalf of them and just see, but their, their economy right here is just so low. Um, that it's just, it, they would have to be very, very lucky with some rules. Uh, it would have taken that they put a card in move, uh, and another card in battle. And that would have to be a Fox card in battle and a wild in move or Fox in move. Either way, they could have eventually moved twice and then gone to the Fox with the three warriors, three wood and the sawmills. And they would have to get a three and break through all three of those warriors first, then do the second battle, get through three again, getting all those points and then getting the points from their roosts. And I think that would have given them a small chance at winning the game there. I'd have to actually go and and calculate but that's probably what i would have attempted uh because i don't really see a way of them stopping me from winning at this point now this is a really rude thing but i end up using my ambush there why not i don't really want to deal with any casualties um so yeah ended up being a pretty good move there i believe they take my base here though, because man, those commanders, the commander is such a good anti Woodland Alliance uh, position in the game. Very, very strong. They're able to break through that base with ease right there. They would have been probably able to break through both bases if uh, I hadn't have had that ambush. So I'm glad I saved that. Yeah, I'm wondering if this Eerie player just didn't see the opportunity of trying to hack through in the in the fox clearing there. Even though it was a gamble, I think it would have been a better gamble than, than this one. And the Marquise here. Ah, just 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 attacking my sympathy. I think they're they're pretty much just giving up here. Um, they might oh, I think they actually reverted to AI because they were just done with their turn. I think they just gave up. That's so sad. Um, but yep, so that's the end there, and I'm looking at what I got here. I I think I end up revolting just for the one point that I would get from revolting here, since I see this as the last turn of the game. So I think I end up revolting. Oh no, I don't. I end up opting for the sympathy path. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. So end up going sympathy, and instead of getting one point, I get two this way. So that makes complete sense as to why I would have done that. So now I think I'm going to be spreading right up into that mouse clearing. I'm just making sure that if I calculated this correctly, if I'm going to be able to win the game. And really, it's just ended up being a crafting win here because, you know, I could have done it in a couple of different ways, but this is just the quickest way for people to not have to kind of wait around. It's actually pretty, pretty close because here I'm also calculating this one point that I'm going to be getting from this keep here. So I crafted these these three items. Um, that gave me, what, five points. And then I have to get this officer here. I guess I didn't have to get that officer, but I'm looking at the opportunity down here. I'm going to be attacking this keep for the 20 to get to 28. And then I'm going to be organizing right there for the next two points to win the game. So pretty, pretty clutch. Now, um, yeah, so this is just kind of a cool example of one of the ways that you can break from the problem that you often run into as the Woodland Alliance on winter maps to get from one side to the other. Usually you just want to get a base kind of close to that area recruit, get a couple warriors, and then move them all as a ball over to the other side, leaving some behind as you go. That way you can go ahead and, you know, drop sympathy and organize the next turn. So I hope you enjoyed this game. Uh, it was a really fun one. Thank you to my opponents for, for joining me in this, and I will see you next time. And uh, yeah, if you enjoyed this kind of content, definitely drop a like as well as subscribe if you want to see more videos like this one. Bye-bye.